So welcome to the NFPA Standard Snapshot. I'm going to be discussing NFPA 1500, the Standard on Fire Department Occupational Safety and Health Program. This standard is it's designed to um, provide guidance and contain minimum requirements for fire service related occupational safety and health programs. And uh, the purpose of the standard is to um, specify the minimum requirements for an occupational safety and health program for a fire department, but it can also be used for those organizations that provide rescue, fire suppression, emergency medical service services, also known as, known as EMS, hazardous materials mitigation, spe special operations, and other emergency services, including public, military, private, and industrial fire departments. So with regards to the risk management plan in, in NFPA 1500, it's imperative that a fire department establish, implement, and update a risk management plan so to ensure that the fire department recognizes the risks and hazards that are present in their jurisdiction. And the intent here is to make sure that each and every member of the fire department is aware of the potential risks and hazard in which they may be responding to or exposed to. This could entail a walkthrough of businesses or buildings within their jurisdiction, developing a pre-plan for certain high-risk buildings where the risk is too high to enter the building and all members will not, uh, will not be entering the building, it is also to ensure that members are aware of the risks involved with, in vehicle operations, training, and personal protective equipment and clothing. If members are aware of risks and hazards, the hopes are that through a risk management plan, the overall risks would be greatly reduced, thus reducing the likelihood of injury to members. With regard to the uh, safety and uh, health policy within NFPA 1500, the intent is to ensure that is to ensure and provide for a safe and healthy working environment, as well as to provide for the means for members to stay healthy. It should be the goal of the fire department to, to reduce the likelihood of injuries through a health and safety program, and this can be accomplished um, by having these plans. And NFPA 1500 addresses training and education with the intent that each member of the fire department is trained and educated to the job or jobs that they will be engaged in, so that they will not find themselves in situations they should not be in, which could increase the likelihood of injury or death. While it is just an, as is important to receive initial training and education, it is just as important to keep up with the education through continuing education. This can be done through many different means, such as through webinars, online classes, physical classes, magazine articles, and tabletop exercises. The key here is to stay up to date on changing technologies and techniques within the fire service. We discussed member qualifications within 1500, and that's to ensure that each member has a minimum qualifications or certifications to be doing the jobs uh, that, they are tasked, that they are tasked with. And having these certifications, it certainly reduces the likelihood. NFPA 1500 addresses fire department apparatus, and the intent behind these requirements is to ensure that all fire department apparatus meet certain minimum requirements so that the highest level of safety is being provided to the operators and occupants of the fire department apparatus. Not only is it important to have safe fire department apparatus, it is just as important to ensure that the occupants are restrained through the use of safety restraints as well, any, as, well as any equipment that might be in the occupant or passenger areas. The intent is also to ensure that anyone who operates fire department apparatus is trained and qualified to operate said apparatus. Driver training must also must include how certain types of fire department apparatus shall be operated in emergency and non-emergency situations. It does go without saying that every incident will dictate a certain response. However, the operator must know the limitations of each piece of apparatus they operate and ensure safe operation as well. With regards to riding in fire department apparatus, the intent, as it's written in 1500, is to ensure that all occupants riding in the apparatus are seat belted in all approved riding positions. This is so that in the event of a collision or an accident, that all occupants are restrained and not get ejected or thrown from the thrown about the inside of the vehicle. NFPA 1500 also discusses the inspection, maintenance, and repair of fire department apparatus with the intent to ensure that all fire department apparatus are inspected and maintained by qualified personnel with the hopes of reducing or eliminating mechanical failures as well as to recognize any mechanical deficiencies so that they can be repaired. NFPA 1500 also discusses protective clothing and equipment 
with the intent to ensure that all fire department um, members receive the proper PPE based on the hazards in which they are likely to be exposed. It is also intended to establish a cleaning schedule of the PPE so as to reduce the exposure of potential toxins. It is not just appropriate to wash PPE in regular household washing machine or dryer, but rather there are specific requirements on how they have to be cleaned to ensure the protective qualities of the PPE are preserved and that the gray water, which is the dirty water, is properly handled. Along with being provided with PPE, it must also meet the requirements spelled out in NFPA 1971. This is to, to reduce or eliminate the chances of members not having or using improper PPE. NFPA 1500 also discusses uh, self-contained breathing apparatus or SCBA with the intent to ensure that all members are using the proper SCBA that provides the highest level of respiratory protection based on the hazards. Uh, NFPA 1500 again discusses uh, briefly the uh, personal alert safety system also known as PASS with the intent that these requirements are to ensure that all members are using approved PASS devices while operating in uh, IDLH atmospheres. PASS devices must meet NFPA 1982 and also must be tested in accordance with the manufacturer's instructions to ensure that they are properly operating. The use of the devices enhances the ability to locate a lost or incapacitated firefighter and thus be used and activated to reduce the likelihood of a lost member NFPA 1500 also discusses an incident management system with the intent to ensure that an IMS or an incident management system is used at all incidents in order to reduce confusion and to add organization to what may be a chaotic situation. It is also to ensure that all fire departments are following the NIM system with the end results being a coordinated effort to mitigate the incident, ensure accountability, and proper allocation of resources and member safety. NFPA 1500 discusses the risk management during emergency operations with the intent to ensure that at all emergency incidents, the incident commander will incorporate a risk management practice to reduce the amount of risks and hazards that members might be exposed to while operating an emergency incident. Understanding that the incident itself is inherently risky and a potential high-risk situation, it is paramount that the incident commander use all of the resources available to ensure members are safe, as well as to balance risk and benefit of placing members in dangerous situations. NFPA 1500 also discusses medical requirements with the intent of these requirements to ensure that all members are physically fit and capable to, capable to engage in and perform the tasks to which they will be exposed to. It, is also, it also establishes the requirement for a fire department physician to conduct medical evaluations. The reason, behind, the reason being is to ensure that the physician who is conducting these medical evaluations is knowledgeable of the job or conditions that fire department members are exposed to. These medical evaluations are much different than an annual physical that a primary care physician might conduct and in many cases are more in-depth. It is for this reason a fire department must have a physician to conduct the evaluations knowing the risks and hazards faced by fire department members. NFPA 1500 also discusses the physical performance requirements with the intent of these requirements being to ensure that candidates and members are physically able to engage in the act activities that the job presents. The fire department must make sure that anyone who will be engaging in these activities meets these requirements so as to reduce the potential for injury and even... NFPA 1500 also discusses health and fitness with the intent being to ensure that not only are members physically capable of performing the job or tasks that, that may be presented with, but to also ensure that the members are staying physically fit. It can be said that at one point in your life, we are physically capable of meeting the demands of the job. However, as we get older, our, older, our bodies not, might not be as ca physically capable. Through a health and fitness program, members will have the opportunity to work, will have the opportunity to work to stay in the optimum physical condition. It is also intended to reduce the chances or likelihood of injuries or death due to lack of physical activity. If you'd like to know more information, you can visit the NFPA website at www.nfpa.org forward slash 1500 to read the standard in its entirety. Thank you.